walking out of the gents and uh and this statuesque <laughs> god of a man said i'm a big fan of your podcast in his aylesbury accent and uh i was like oh you, you're talking to me <laughs> <laughs> been a while since i've had a random person that what? i've not Recognized seen before in the streets. <laughs> say that to me um but he was there with i'm, I'm assume his partner i don't know wife girlfriend what have you and both of them were towering above me these beautiful tall people um <laughs> it was it was really nice to get to say hello um to them but on this game leighton said catalan's robbed why wasn't that a penalty try we were in the catalan end and even from there it was obvious in real time and on the tiny fucking screen in the corner however we enjoyed a good chant with all the non-saints club supporters let's hope their 30 something players fade now wouldn't be good for them to win and everything next year too at least hurrell will be shot for them next year i think he meant shit <laughs> yeah they probably write about that as well. yeah i'm gonna say probably both um, Doc House Dave says, amazing intense game, full of tension, big hits, drama, the lot. Ref had a great game and I loved every minute. Um, RL is the greatest game of all. I hope Catalan return and win one. They deserve lots of credit. Uh, Lee Whitnell, who we got to say hello to before the game in the pub. And uh, I think he came and said hello to you, David, didn't he, whilst we were all queuing for the toilet? He um, did. Great to see Lee. Uh, always a, a, a favourite of the uh, of the grand final crowd, um, especially because his team never win one. Uh, <laughs> he said, "I love this description. Actually, it's really good." Uh, like the slow, relentless progress of a glacier, there was a grinding inevitability about Saints' victory. For a few happy moments, I thought that Catalans might pull off a shock, but they couldn't make the most of the few times they had possession close to the Saints' line. At least I had a nice beer with Mark before, which dulled the disappointment a bit. Oh, thanks, Lee. <laughs> I love that, the slow, relentless progress of a glacier. Yeah, that's about right. Tom Andrews says, very good final between the two uh, best two teams with the professional finalists just coming out on top. Shame the Catalan chairman seems to be the sorest loser since a certain toy shop owner. And <laughs> <laughs> to Wembley, three trophies. Nice one. Three trophies in a row is mighty impressive, but I bet Coop can't wait to lift another next year. Well, we'll invite him back, um, uh, Tom, to, to, come and, uh, to come and look at the trophy again. But Bernard Gauch's comments were, like, you know, stupid. Yeah, were they not? They were of, yeah, they were out of order. Um, uh, look, uh, uh, every chairman's entitled, uh, you know, to, and he's a passionate rugby league man, isn't he? I mean, he absolutely is. So I put put all of that to one side. Do I like Bernard Gauch? I absolutely do. I think he's doing he's done a, an amazing job supporting Catalan and getting that club to where it is today. Um, Saint has made comments that, uh, in the bitter aftertaste of final defeats, which is which were not in the best interests of the sport. And I think Gauch has got carried away here. It was a, it was a daft thing to say. Yeah, I was going to say that, that he who has a club chairman who has not said something stupid can, can throw the first stone. <laughs> no, exactly. But it, don't do that. <laughs> it'd be unfair of us, or, you know, it'd be a bit remiss of us to not pull out Gauch for his outburst about, if people who don't know, he said that if um, if they ever get to a final again, he won't bring his team over unless it's three Australians referee in the final. Um, I have read, I think, um, James Gordon on Love Rugby League uh, did a bit of a commentary piece about this saying how about he supports the um, the French Federation to improve their own standards of refereeing so that a French um, you know that so that a French match official is a permanent fixture of all of our major finals um, if they can reach that standard and uh, I think I would applaud that approach more than the belittling of referees but this is Gauch has got history for this it's kind of almost um, expected after they lose uh this and and it's kind of frustrating because of all the good things you say that he does it's just like it's frustrating when beaumont comes out and speaks ever given that lee wouldn't exist without him sort of thing yeah i I, I do kind of think it's a um part of it is that he's he is talking to his own fans and kind of yeah kind of saying i'm i'm as frustrated with this as you are uh they're all against us 
we'll get them next time type type stuff and it, for me that's what it is it's it's you know he's not you don't you don't own, own businesses that have that kind of you know that kind of power without being you know he's not an idiot is what i'm saying he, he, you know and actually i think he's rather than talking to the general public i think he's talking to his own fans there particularly um just, i, I just, think you ought to have saved that then for uh, his next program comment in french or something like that uh yeah so, again, again, I mean, you know, we, we, we all say stupid things in the heat of the moment. We do. We, we do. We absolutely do. Uh, me more than most. I, I, what I'd also say is it was largely in contrast to the graciousness um, with which Garcia, you know, the, the the French captain spoke after the after the final. I thought he was very measured. Um, and, and McNamara was as well. Yeah, but he didn't get the chance to see the, uh, the decisions back like Gauch had done by the time he made his comments. <laughs> it sounded like Gauch really wanted to bite his tongue, but then saw Lachlan's coot on the just foot on the floor and was just like, no, mate, I'm, <laughs> I'm off the hook. <laughs> I'm going to stick the boot in. <laughs> hey, who's next? stop me going to Catland next year, that's for sure. Who's next, Alan? I think oh, I thought it was you. But anyway. no, sorry, Fatboy Rob, Rob, Rob then, I'll go. Fatboy Rob said, enjoyable day out. The crowd was big enough for a good atmosphere. I think that's fair to say, actually. It didn't feel like, yeah. you know, it didn't feel empty inside at all. People might have seen on TV a lot of empty seats and there were swathes of empty seats near to us, but it did feel still like a bit of a good buzz inside the ground, even with like one team only having 1,200, 1,300 fans or whatever it was. Um, but anyway, yeah, he said... Oh, yeah. I thought- I thought, it, no, I agree with you. I thought it was a good atmosphere, but I was in the Saints end, so all I could hear was Saints fans, really. Uh, so Rob went on to say, as usual, Saints got the benefit of the officials in big games, especially with the non-penalty try, <laughs> the inexplicable decision to rule a knock-on uh, and deny Catalans a match-leveling penalty, and not seeing Coot was two yards in touch when he batted the penalty back in. Another close game influenced by a weak referee. Massive asterisk next to this win. <laughs> 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 yeah, Rob, you can put as many asterisks as you like next to all of our wins, mate. <laughs> Honestly. John Scotter says, Tomkins not fit, Coot in touch, punch not dealt with, questionable penalty by Mar end, just your normal 80 minutes of the greatest game. <laughs> <laughs> Another Hall fan. Uh, Jen K, great to be back at Old Trafford. When it came to the rugby, it was very typical grand final. Low scoring and edgy. Didn't expect Catalans to be in contention for so long. And the more the game went on, the more I thought they might just do it. It's the hope that kills you. Good to see Nagama finally getting some recognition before bowing out. That's a good review. Oh, EFC 78JU said, It was so entertaining before kickoff. off as there was fans at Old Trafford again and at a grand final, but the game itself was a close one. As St. Helens edged a kick by Lachlan Coote to win it. If he would have missed it, it would have been the same as Newcastle, headed to Golden Point with the scores of 10-10, but instead it ended 10-12, and unfortunately St. Helens have got three in a row. Hopefully someone stops them from four in a row. Well, it's up to everybody else to try. Uh, my bread 58 says hit nearly every minute <laughs> to my fingers most um, intense brutal stuff but since just deservedly uh, edged it uh, predicted last week how cats would need to score uh, Kevin Nagrama first touch in a sense try uh, try Wigan lack of ground winning try was legend Asterix and three Pete very sweet <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that is actually interesting. Yeah, that point you made about Naguama, his first ever touch for the try, his last ever touch for the try. Yeah, I can't argue with that. Uh, and he's such he's a lovely, lovely fellow. But the the I didn't actually see it when it was in the ground. We saw it on the on the TV on the on replay. But the presentation of the Harry Sunderland Trophy with uh, with Rob Burrow and his and his very excited little daughter was lovely. Uh, we did get one more late one in at JW Pal Nine said, "Here we go, Saints are winning four in a row." But he's put music signs next to it. I guess I'm meant to sing something, David. What am I meant to sing? You're probably, you're probably and I like it, 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 like here we go. Saints are winning four in a row. For example. Fair enough. 
I hope I hope you got out of that what you wanted. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, thank God we didn't have to uh, have to hear that. Yeah. I could put some music on with it if you like. Oh God, no, I didn't. no I, he didn't ask for you to actually actually play the music. He just wanted the song. Um, I think we've we've pretty much covered everything there, then, haven't we? With with that, we've we've done the sort of um, talk through the game. We've done all the fan views. We've talked about the crowd. We've talked about the atmosphere. We've talked about the um, extra players in the Saints lineup. We've covered it all. <laughs> the, 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 only thing, the only thing I would say is um, congratulations to Saints. Very well done and all that. But for fuck's sake, can somebody else win it next year? Please. Thank you. Uh, uh, we can't do anything about that, Alan. We just have to go out and play our game and I absolutely no no it, that, that wasn't a, that wasn't a call to you no 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 to, I, it was called no, to everybody it, else but, to pull uh, the finger I, out exactly <laughs> I, t- I totally understand because I lived through a decade of Wigan uh, and then we lived through that really horrible period where Leeds were totally and utterly dominant and used to beat us every year in the grand final um, totally get that all, all of the fans want to see somebody else winning the grand final. The, Obviously, the, the I one off don't. dominance isn't a good thing in whoever you whoever you, you want um, you want clear competition and I, you want it to be to a degree I agree but there's an element that I disagree I think sometimes dominance sets a team apart and then it means that there's kind of someone for everyone to hate, but unfortunately in rugby league, everyone hates everyone anyway, even though we're all like best of friends. So it doesn't kind of materialize, I suppose, like it did with say, you know, Liverpool in the seventies and eighties, United in the nineties and noise, then Chelsea and city and, and that sort of thing in, in the, in the round ball game, I think, or the Patriots, you know, fuck the Patriots and that sort oh, of thing. But, there's there's an element of of that can breed some something else within the game, but I just don't feel like because you know you had Wigan and Catalans have won the league leader shields in this time, and um, other clubs have been successful at, at Wembley against St Helens. Warrington beat Wembley, it beat yeah. um, beat yeah. Saints at Wembley, didn't they? So I think. The way our, I don't know, I just think the way it, it formats and stuff with us, yeah, that dominance doesn't lead to that figurehead club to hate, which is a shame because I wish everyone was as united in their hatred of the St. Helens side as, <laughs> as you are. <laughs> no, but massive credit to them. I think the, the final thing to talk about isn't necessarily this game as such, but the obvious question, and I'm going to start with Alan on this, where does this Saints side now rank? You know, three in a row, only only um, Leeds did that back in the late sort of noughties. So where do you think they rank overall in, in let's say, Super League history? Because, you know, let's let's be, we don't we don't remember back. You know, let's not talk about the great Wigan sides. Let's talk about the great Super League sides. <laughs> They have to be in the conversation as one of the best in the sense of their efficiency. They are painfully efficient, um, but therefore uh, they're unlikely to get any votes as the best team <laughs> because they're not particularly exciting to watch. Um, yeah, I... I would probably have them. Uh, they're up there in the conversation, but I do think I do think Leeds at the pump were better. I think. I think Bradford and the Pomp were better in the sense of a better watch. I don't mean it's better in terms of outcome, because actually as an outcome, they're probably the best. Um, so they're in the conversation, but I just can't quite put them top of the list because they're just a bit boring. If you flip this run around <laughs> and you had the Holbrook side of like 2018 and 2019 kind of at the back end of this run that they're on and this wolf team at the start and you sort of think well he's inherited their dog shit side from Cunningham but he's, <laughs> he's managed to turn them into work from work a day into competitive and winning which is impressive and then the next guy comes along and makes them exciting and entertaining then you'd be I think we'd be thinking about them 
differently. We'd be kind of like the <laughs> thinking about them the same as that lead side, but 